good morning. Uh, welcome to my learning how production of setting up controls for the small greenhouse. Now, if you were home all day long and were lucky enough to be retired, you might not need this many controls because you would be home <coughs> to be able to deal with different um, things that would happen to your greenhouse during the day. But when you have to work, um, you really need every one of these controls that I'm about to show you. Um, it, it looks a little more complicated than it is, but um, let's, let's begin. Um, this control right here is a simple thermostat that your electric heater plugs into. This one here happens to be, have a, a probe on the end, um, but that's just because I had this hanging around. You can buy them that look exactly like this without a probe that will um, work fine. So your electric heater plugs into this and this gives you exact control of the temperature that you'd like to keep your greenhouse during the day. I grow Hoyas so I don't want the temperature at night to fall much below 55 so I will turn this to 55 and when it drops below that it kicks on the uh, 1500 watt electric heater. So that is what this is designed for. Now we're going to skip this one for a minute and we're going to go over here. This control is another thermostat. It's, uh, it's almost exactly like this. It has no probe except this one is wired specifically that when it gets too hot in your greenhouse during the day, it will send power to this plug in which you will have your exhaust fan to your greenhouse plugged in. So I generally set this thing about 90 and you'd be surprised in a little greenhouse like this how quickly the temperature will hit 90. So when it hits 90 this thing is powered up and this is the exhaust fan right here. This will be plugged into that and it will kick the exhaust fan on. Now theoretically it will pull the hot air out of the upper portion of the greenhouse and pull the air through the shutter that I installed in the greenhouse door. So the suction will pull this open and it will cool your greenhouse and then when the temperature reaches the approximate um, temperature that it should be, it will shut your exhaust fan off. Okay, the next control uh, it's absolutely crucial to small greenhouses like this. It only takes one day of the sun shining, cool, dry air outside. Feels great, but inside this greenhouse, without this control, it will be quickly turn the, the greenhouse into a solar drying oven where everything will just crisp right up. So this is a humidistat, which I generally keep at about 50 to 60 percent when the humidity falls below that um, th that particular RH it's it opens up the contacts and it will send power to this piggyback plug so you're probably asking how does turning power on here humidify your greenhouse well into this is plug this right here which is no is a solenoid this has a valve in here, your garden hose connects to this end, and when this receives power, it'll open the valve in here, sending water from your garden hose out here. Here you can have a, a number of different things connected. I generally connect it to a misting line right here, so this would, um, it's all coiled up right now, but it would it would connect right here and water will spray out of these misting nozzles humidifying the environment. It's absolutely crucial um, especially when growing Hoyas like I do that the humidity remain high enough. I learned the hard way that without that humidity your plants will quickly um, perish. So this is a crucial piece of equipment um, runs about a hundred dollars um, but it's really needed unless you live at home and can come out here periodically when the sun shines and spray everything down with a hose without being able to do that you can't grow Hoyas in a small greenhouse like this without this this device along with the humidistat um, 
basically that's it for the basic controls. Also, I want to tell you that when you're hooking up a misting line, it's very helpful to hook on a, a, a filter like this. This will help prevent your nozzles from clogging up. Uh, these things generally run about $18. They, they screw on between your garden hose and this solenoid. Now let's talk a little bit about electrical in the greenhouse. It's kind of a scary subject and I'm going to show you some things that may make you faint, but um, it's as safe as I can make them. I want to also show you some different devices that are available. This thing here when you plug in, when you need to plug in an extension cord one to another or two different devices where you don't want it to get wet. One end of the cord goes in here with a plug, one end goes in here. This thing will shut up and it will seal out any potential water. It makes a watertight connection. Uh, it makes the greenhouse a lot safer. This here operates similarly except you could put in a power strip and a number of extension cords. It's a watertight box right here. This is what, what it looks like. It's, um, it, it will seal out every bit of water. You can hit this with a, with a hose or rain all day long and you'll never get a drop of water in there. There's some kind of special gel here that seals totally tight when an extension cord is run into this box. So, um, basically, that's it for this portion of my learning how production of setting up controls for the small greenhouse. Welcome back to the second part of my learning how production of setting up controls for the small greenhouse. I want to show you some of these controls that I've already installed in my first greenhouse. Um, maybe we can look and see exactly what's wired to what and how it works. Now I first want to show you some of the electrical. In this greenhouse I did have an electrician install two properly grounded GFCI outlets that if they get wet they will automatically kick off preventing um, possible electrocution. Uh, each I have two different circuits in here each has a, a 20 amp capacity uh, this yellow cord right here is going to go out to my secondary greenhouse which is going to be plugged into this side. This is an extremely heavy duty extension cord. They say never to use them but um, sometimes you just you have to make exceptions and it is sort of a temporary situation for three months in the summer. So that will plug in here and that will bring some power into that small greenhouse down there. Uh, here we have my heating thermostat as I showed you in the other video, this one does not have the temperature probe. Into this right here, we have an electric heater right here that's plugged. I would normally have that turned to 1500 watts uh, on full high so that when it does call for heat at night, this thing will automatically kick on and off. It works very good hanging here. It's very safe. I've used it for a number of years. Um, seems to work very well. Um, here we have the humidistat that I was telling you about before. It is right in the center. Uh, here is the piggyback plug that comes off from that that I explained uh, in the other segment. And this plug right here is plugged into that piggyback and it goes over here to the solenoid. Which I have not yet connected a garden hose to. I will be doing that next week. The garden hose will connect into this side and the misters that I showed you will be connected into this side and I will bring it around the greenhouse floor. I keep this greenhouse floor fairly wet. It's what provides the humidity for the greenhouse in the summer. I tried putting that misting line in various spots and it always would keep the plants a little bit too wet. And with Hoyas you have to really watch that you do not over wet them. So I've come to the conclusion the best thing to do is to mount it on this bench down here and it sprays water at the floor. The humidity um, from the water on the floor will raise up and it keeps it quite nice in here. Um, I do use a fair number of gallons of water um, doing that 
but in Vermont the sun shines so seldom that we don't have to worry about that water being on for too many days out of the summer. Once again this control over here is the cooling thermostat into which the exhaust fan which in this greenhouse is on the opposite end is plugged into so when it gets too hot the exhaust fan kicks on I have a shutter a large shutter on the bottom here that I open up and plus I have two holes in the floor um, which I wash debris and bring cords into this greenhouse I think you can probably see one of them right there and there is another one right there with a cord coming out of the floor so I rinse the floor daily to keep this greenhouse as clean as possible and that helps prevent disease so pretty much I think that this learning how production is has come to an end I thank you for watching how to set up controls for the small greenhouse